So what you're looking at here is the form, the base for a needle felted lamb. So a friend of mine suggested that I start offering them in this form and then you would buy curly bits and you would give her a pretty curly fleece. Um, so, her ears are kind of wrong, but I can fix that with the needle. There she is. And then uh, what I'm going to do is um, show you how to needle in all these curly bits to make her look like she's got a cute little fleece. And this, this U is based loosely on Sylvia. I just processed her fleece. This is her wool. And so she'll be called Sylvia. Her cute little face. Okay, so like I said, she's already got her feet, her head, her face is made, um, her ears. So what I'm gonna do now, is I'm, I'm gonna give her a nice fleece. So I'm gonna take this, this is all curly locks, and what this is, is wool that's too tightly coiled for me to enjoy trying to flick or comb it. It's just really spirally twisty and so what I do with this is I'll just take the loose ends and needle it in her so that she has the appearance of having little curly fleece and all I do is rip all the rip the curly bits by the tips and set it down and then just needle in those loose ends and then once I got them needled in good then I gently sort of try to place the curls so that the blonde tips are evenly distributed. So they're kind of long, so there's plenty there to needle in. I probably could have flicked that one, but too late. This is a really good, um, Kind of a starter activity to just sort of get the feel for needling and using your needle to place the wool where you want it to be which is uh, I think that's a technique with you know like needle felting artists which I would never claim to be satisfying sound when you get the, the loose bits of wool. Pushed into the ball. So a felting needle has barbs on it. I don't know if you can see it here, but there's jagged edges to it. And what those jagged edges do is they catch the loose fibers and shoves them into your form. 
compacts them also. So you can't do this with just like a regular sewing needle. You actually need a, a felting needle to do this. All right, so I'm gonna keep working on this. I'm not gonna make you watch this whole painstaking process, but I'm gonna cover this entire ball with these curly locks and then from there we'll decorate her a little bit more, make her look a little more fancy. So cute. All right, so I've needled most of her fleece. So beautifully coiled and nice. Um, and I'm just gonna take you through the final steps here, just to give you a sense for how I'm doing it. One thing I started doing is, if the fuzzy side that I'm needling in is too long, I snip that off and then I'm gonna use those uh, snippings for the ears or whatever other pieces I wanna use to um, create elements or feature. So what I've been doing is I kind of just sort of set the uh, locks on the bare spot, kind of roughly the way I want it to be. And then starting on the one edge, I just grab some of the wool from that side of the blob of locks and just sort of run it around the perimeter. And I'm gonna put my bifocals on just so I can see a little bit better. Okay. And then go to the other side and send it in. And anything that's like loose and fuzzy like this, I just needle that in. Cause you really want only the really well-formed coils to be left at the top. And then I go through the center and you can see I'm starting now to push the coils down, which is okay. But I'm trying deliberately to not put the needle through the coiled bits, but more the base part. And there's a bit of fuzz here. Doesn't really add anything other than a background color for the coiled bits. All right, so now that lock is pretty much in there, but you can see that the um, the lock coils are kind of willy-nilly. I like it to be more compact, not all loose and crazy like this. So I just kind of focus on each lock, each little coil, and get the fuzzies that surround it needled in. And once you, you know, when you start messing with the needle, you'll get a feel for it, because it not only does it push the fiber into your form, but you can also use it to place the decorative elements where you want them. So there's a little bit of a hole there, so I'm going to poke that in there. Nice and easy. Again, don't shove your coils in. And then once you've got it compacted enough, then just give everything a tiny tap just to get it more organized and in place. And then around the edges, so you can see this is the still the bald patch here that needs to get filled in. Around the edges of where I've needled, for whatever reason, I think I just like the tidiness of it, I sort of shove them in so there's no loose base bits left. Oops. Okay, let's see here. So now I've got, I've got one lock. And you can put these, I used to do it one lock at a time, and that's perfectly fine, but I've just gotten to the point now where I'm comfortable enough doing a group of locks. Oops, sorry, trying to get this closer here. So you see I have quite a bit of excess there that I don't need. So now, like I said, instead of wasting it and needling all that wool in to my form, I'm gonna make this little packet of fluff here. If I say I wanna just do one lock at a time, which is perfectly fine, just lay it there, needle that into the base. 
And that, there you go. Totally acceptable. So did you notice that one piece, I could not get it to go in just with my needle, so I'm gonna hold it down a little bit and just force it. We only got this much, like a Y left. I'm gonna start over on this end. All right, there's a patch here. Maybe that is fine. I feel the need to put a little bit more right there. Let's see what I can find here.
I don't put a tail on these. I used to put a little fluke tail on the back end, so cute, but I don't anymore. I just load it up with curly bits. Okay, then what I do is just kind of shape it, kind of go around, just look for any little bits that are sticking out or anything that makes her uneven. She looks pretty good, actually. And I have done all of this. I do have a tool that allows me to accelerate the needling because I've got, there's five needles in there, I think. And it's nice, it's got this little safety catch to it. And this is, um, Clover makes this little plastic and it locks so that you can. But I did not use that on this one. I mean, you can actually make this with just one needle. All right, so. I think the next thing I want to do is I want to put her little top knot on there, her little wool on the pole, which is part of the Shetland standard. So let's find some particularly fetching curly bits. I like this little glob right here. And then I'm going to trim the bottom. Point wasting it in the form when I can use it for something. Then I just do the same thing. Needle it into her head though. And I start at the back and then I work a little forward. So I kind of cheat in the forms. I hot glue them together. So you'll find as you're needling stuff in, sometimes you might have a hard stop, which is where the glue is. You can poke right through the glue. It doesn't hurt anything. I should have a picture of Sylvia here so I can get a better sense for what she, um, She really looks like a little precious thing. She looks like, I always think of these as looking like Lucille Ball. And uh, I actually know the demographic of the people that watch my videos, so you all know who I'm talking about. And sometimes for the poll, I'll put a little bit of it on and then I come back and look at it because sometimes it looks weird to me, but I'm actually <laughs> quite pleased. Oh my gosh. Could she be any cuter? Okay, so that's that. Then what I do, I dyed some wool, one of my very early and last Forays into dyeing. I did a bunch of red and orange for holiday use. All right, so I'm gonna string this little bell, and I bought a bunch of these bells at one point. So you can do two things. One is, I suppose, you could make a little collar and just put it like that. I don't do that though. I make a little bow, and then I needle the bow into her neck. It all sounds so violent. And the way that I needle it is you can see there's a still a little gap in the, um, the loop for the bell, which does jingle a tiny bit. So what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of those loose bits that I trimmed off, find a longer one. You need something that has, maybe I'll take a lock. You need something that has some length to it. Yeah, this is good. So this is like a three inch length. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the tip and use that to feed it through. This is one of my unfavoritest parts of crafting is threading needles, it just makes me crazy. And I'm definitely gonna probably have to edit this part out because I can't stand it. It's gotta be torn. 
torture to watch me struggle with this, but whatever. Oh, thank God. Okay. And then I'm going to trim off that end because needling works better when you've got open fibers. A lot like spinning, drafting is better when you've got open fibers. And I've got, you know, two blobs of open wool here. And then I'm just going to needle all of this wool into her neck. So really all you're going to see is the bell and the bow. So watch this magical disappearing act. And then that holds the, bo uh, the bell very fast. To her sweet little neck. Oh, can you stand it? Aren't you the cutest little thing? And like I said, I'll probably come back. I think I might have lost her little top knot there. I'll come back with the needle and I've been known to like, you know, I'll have these at a sale and somebody's actually taking it and I'll grab my needle and quick fix her up a little bit. That's that. Super fun, super cute. You could probably string this and make a little, you know, Christmas tree ornament or not. Just put her on the shelf. It's a sweet little girl. Oh my dear, dear.